Hey guys, I'm gonna do my first attempt at a music production walkthrough video uh, for my song On a Train for my album Only Fourth Time. So I'm gonna kind of walk through uh, my process and plug-in choices and all that kind of nerdy music production stuff. So stay tuned if you want to see some of that. All right, let's jump into the session here. Awesome. So yeah, I originally wrote this part on guitar, but um, I was starting to build the song in Logic. Usually it's kind of a hybrid record while I write kind of process. So anyway, I jumped in here, pulled up the, the 70s funk clav. Uh, I feel like I have used this way too much, but I just love the, the sound of this thing. So I ended up playing the progression on this and just kind of like loved the vibe that it was putting out. It's kind of like sort of a roadsy keyboard sound, but has just a lot more bite to it. Kind of an electric guitar feel. So that was awesome. Uh, needed a little bit more atmosphere. Um, so added in a synth pad, airwaves below here. This is also just a preset, um, but a good one. That's the thing I love about Logic. There's so much like good presets and sounds just packed in here um, that are great jumping off points. Sometimes they don't even need much tweaking. So add it in synth pad, give it a little airiness. And then I kind of had a little guitar melody in mind. So uh, I ended up recording or uh, kind of programming some vibraphone in there, uh, outlining that part um, on top of there. So that's kind of the whole intro part there. It's just those three elements. Um, yeah, that's a vibe. So um, I was gonna do guitar from the beginning, but I heard that and I was just like, that's too good. It needs its own space. Um, so left that in there. Um, usually after I kind of get some initial chords down, start building a vibe, I'll jump into drums pretty quickly because um, that kind of sets the tone even more um, for the rest of the song. Um, so I'll bring that in here. So after a progression of the clav, bring in the drum beat. So this is also a preset. Um, this is from Logic's drum machine designer. It's called Ibiza. Uh, I didn't honestly even do that much to it. Um, I think I jumped in there and used some of the native controls to kind of like tweak with some of the sounds. Um, you can kind of jump in there and uh, you can actually pick sounds, adjust the envelope, noise, tone, bunch of stuff like that. Um, so I think I did a little bit of that. Um, definitely rolled off a lot of the highs, especially in the beginning, give it that more lo-fi feel to it. Um, but yeah, pretty simple. Um, oh yeah, I did add some tape saturation. I love this plugin. It's throughout all of my tracks so much. Uh, some tape saturation uh, on this track. A tiny bit of slap, it looks like. Didn't, didn't even realize that. Um, and then a little bit of that, that tape hiss kind of brought in there. Just gives it, again, that more tangible lo-fi feel. So I'll play just the drums. Hmm. Yeah, I love how fat the kick is. Um, so yeah, didn't need much tweaking. It's funny, this drum pattern, too, uh, it was kind of an accident. I created a pattern and then it got scooted over when I was trying to loop it. Um, and so it looped in a weird place um, and kind of created this strange but awesome kind of vibe to it. So I just kind of rolled with it. So that's why it doesn't even start at the beginning of the bar here. It just kind of, that second bar comes in. That part right there.
that little like turnaround that was actually kind of a weird looping accident but uh went with it that became part of the main pattern and uh and there you go um so yeah that's kind of the foundation um of the process here then i sort of jumped into bass line to kind of round out the rhythm section so let's bring in these guys um so listen a little bit of that Yeah, Liverpool bass. Um, so this album, I I wanted more of a real bass sound, um, but uh, I currently didn't have a real bass, so I just kind of rolled with this um, this setting called Liverpool. Um, it's supposed to be based on the sort of violin bass sound, but um, yeah, honestly, it doesn't sound super realistic, but it doesn't sound completely like synthesizer either. And it's a pretty inoffensive tone. It's got a lot of the highs rolled off, pretty mid-rangey, good low mid presence. So it actually just blended super well with the track, with the drums especially. So yeah, that's... um the basic drum sound I added a little bit of side chain compression on that um, see so yeah, I get in that kick drum in there make some space and then uh, you'll see kind of below it I bounced it and then uh, created a high pass version so the reason I did this was just to add a little bit more high-end grit to it um, and character um, so you can hear it's it's rolled off pretty high. It's also very low in the mix. So yeah, this one I um, it was the same basic sound, but I upped the distortion quite a bit, um, and I rolled off pretty much everything below 500, um, and then just barely brought it in alongside the the main bass sound. So here's how they sound together. So it's pretty subtle, but um, I feel like it just helps the bass kind of translate better on smaller speakers that don't have as much bass content. Um, yeah, and just created a little bit of nice texture to that. So yeah, I'll play that all together from the part where the bass comes in. Yeah, so there's the foundation of the song right there. I was actually digging this so much, I was like questioning whether to even add guitar, but I ended up recording some nylon string guitar, kind of playing that original pattern This one was just some nylon string guitar recorded with uh, my condenser right here. Um, I did use a channel strip. I have a tube channel strip that I use, actually made by Art. Um, it's pretty cheap, but it sounds great, so I have no complaints. Um, I was kind of not sure when I bought it whether it would be worth it or a paperweight, but it's turned out to be surprisingly awesome. So I use it on vocals, I use it on guitar stuff, um, and it's kind of great. It also has like an opto compressor built in, um, so a little bit of compression on the way in. I pretty much destroyed all that beautiful tone uh, with a guitar amp plugin. Uh, so you can see here I ran it through the Logic uh, virtual amp modeling. But it just kind of creates such a cool lo-fi sound. I did this a little bit on my last album uh, on some songs. But yeah, just with the spring reverb, with a little bit of that distortion, kind of cuts out some of the low end and just fit really well with this track in particular. So 
so that's the main guitar part um i ended up you can see muting a lot of sections that i feel like didn't need extra stuff going on um and then in the chorus i have more of uh clean guitars happening so solo some of that yeah so they're pretty in the background uh, more of a texture i think i rolled off quite a bit um, hard panned those two sides so yeah this is the main guitar bus so had a little bit more compression, little opto compression on there, kind of gluing it together. Again, the J37 tape plugin. Gotta have that little saturation, a little more tape noise, and a little bit of delay, kind of some loose eighth note slap back. So. so you can hear that in the context of the track. So yeah, that's pretty much the acoustic guitars. Um, and then the electric guitar. So kind of listening to the vibe, I definitely was feeling like with the vibraphone and the funk clav, I was like, this needs some more like tropical islandy vibes. So um, I actually recently got this uh, glass guitar slide. Um, I think I have it over here. There it is. And uh, I have been experimenting with that. Slide guitar is super hard. I'm not very good at it. Um, had to do many takes to get this, but uh, love how it turned out. So yeah, it's just kind of outlining the chords in the chorus. This is uh, a Logic uh, amp as well, um, kind of based on a, a Fender, like Super Reverb or something like that. So it's got the reverb cranked. It's got some, uh, got some stereo tremolo or vibrato going on. Uh, I added some side chain compression again, because why not? So you can hear it kind of locked in with the drums. <laughs> I do a lot of side chaining um, different layers to the kick uh, just to get everything kind of pumping with that rhythm. Kind of going back to some of the percussion. So changed up the drum pattern a bit, as you can hear, a little bit more going on. Got this clap thing. So pulled some samples for that, got this little swell, some snaps. in the chorus, just doing chords, pretty simple. Got some vibraphone. Oof. So chill. Um, I love that. We got these little harp parts here. So just adding a little bit of magic here and there little mystical arpeggios. So yeah, that's just a, a Celtic harp preset. Ran it through some tape delay and some tape saturation. Definitely boosted quite a bit of the myths. But yeah, just swimming in reverb. But yeah, it just adds a nice little, nice little garnish. And 
And uh, I think that pretty much does it. Basic vibe of the song. Um, kind of moving on to vocals. So like I mentioned, uh, my vocals, I record with this condenser here. Um, so I actually recently modified it and replaced the capsule. But it uh, is basically just a cheap condenser I got from a friend in college for like 30 bucks used. So I've used that for like literally every album and I didn't modify it until after I finished the album. So everything you're hearing is that $30 microphone, um, you know, pre doing anything to it to make it nicer and then run through that really cheap preamp. So <laughs> really not uh, expensive stuff going on. Uh, but yeah, so the vocals had a little bit of tube preamp uh, to give it a little color, some opto compression on the way in, nothing too crazy, maybe like minus 3 dB at the biggest peaks and uh, do a little solo of the vocal sound here so you can get a feel for it. I don't know what happened and I can't explain My head is all hazy and I'm here on a train so yeah, let's jump in and see what's going on. Uh, so rolled off quite a bit of the lows actually, a little bit higher than I would usually do a roll off, but um, but there you go. Uh, got the kind of 1176 inspired um, FET vintage compressor going on. Uh, fairly high ratio. It's um, don't know what happened just really kind of slamming it, kind of leveling out the overall volume and then bringing up some of those details. I don't know what happened and I can't explain. But I definitely did a slower attack than you would usually have with a traditional 1176, just about 10 milliseconds there. Uh, that's going into the sort of LA-2A opto compressor um, as well, so I have a little bit slower attack there, um, kind of adding in some of the harmonic distortion. Um, I don't know what happened. A more I can't explain. Conservative amount. My head is all hazy, and I'm here on a train. So yeah, those are the the two main compressors doing all the work. A little bit of EQ after that. So again, rolled off even even more of the lows, um, a little bit at 300, a uh, little bump uh, above 2K, about 2,600, and then, yeah, a roll off around 10K. Also ran it into the J37. Here you go again, pretty much every track in this session. Um, so this has uh, a little bit of uh, saturation going on there, and then actually some long delay. I really love the delay sound of this so yeah. I don't know what happened and I can't explain my head is all hazy and I'm here on a train without the tape I delay. don't know my station or where I should be but my heart is aching and I don't want to leave the reverb let's jump into that Chroma verb has been kind of one of my go-to favorites in Logic in particular. I have other reverb plugins, but I pretty much always go to Chroma verb because it's just there and easy and I know it really well. So have some, some vocal haul going, good amount of pre-delay. I did actually two reverb sends, one that's mono and one that is more stereo to kind of widen it up in the chorus. Um, did some roll off up to 250 hertz and some overdrive before the reverb. So I feel like it helps it kind of like stick out more in the track, adding in that, that saturation before the reverb. So I typically do that on vocals. So it's only for a time. A few months will be fine. Bring the rest of the track. So 
also got some uh, vocal doubles here. So down here I have, yeah, just a standard vocal double kind of going into the same processing. Um, I did add a chorus to it so you can kind of hear that soloed. Sounds a little bit funky by itself. A few months will be fine. But yeah, it just kind of widens it up and uh, kind of gives you a nice stereo image layered underneath the main vocal. Other than that, same exact processing as the main vocal. The only place where it changes up, you can see I have the pan doubles here. So these are more at equal volume and kind of split side to side. Um, I also have a another guitar amp emulation that they're running through to kind of create a more lo-fi sound. That sinking feeling, something too good to let go. Even just for a minute, I don't want this distance to grow. So yeah, it's just kind of a nice way to differentiate that section, that sort of bridge, interlude, whatever you want to call it, and just kind of make it a little bit more dreamy. Final chorus here. That's pretty much it. So layered on top of that, you can see I have some falsetto vocals. If I'm feeling brave, solo these. Um, Basically just did some pan doubles of the melody in the verses um, in falsetto. Here's, uh, here's them soloed. Don't know what happened, that can't explain. My head is all hazy, and I'm here on the train. So yeah, crazy ton of reverb on that. Um, pretty much just slammed it with one compressor um, and blended it in. So. You can't really hear them too specifically, but it just creates a nice kind of uh, ethereal atmosphere to the vocal. I don't know what happened, and I can't explain. My head is all hazy, and I'm here on a train. So also got some harmonies here. Um, so again, pans left, right a little bit. Um, Mostly same processing as the main vocal. Um, I have, once again, Abbey Road J37 tape plug-in on there. Good amount of reverb, so let's listen to that. My head is all hazy, and I'm here on a train. So there you go. Um, main vocals, a little bit of falsetto doubling, um, and then harmonies. So yeah, we can kind of listen to it all together for this last chorus here. And so last thing, uh, master bus. So usually put a little bit of bus compression, just kind of glue it together. Um, yeah, it's actually kind of funny. I haven't been into this session in a while. I feel like I would use a lot of very different uh, methods now, but it came together and uh, sounds good. So yeah, that's pretty much it. There it is on a train. Uh, let me know in the comments if you have any other questions, uh, things that I missed in the process. Hopefully that was helpful, interesting, entertaining in some way. And uh, thanks for watching.